Impact Media. Putting a face on radio. the tune just before that we had it's Tuesday and we have the holiday show just around the corner. Progressive Torch and Twang is one of our specialty shows on the impact. Uh, during the evenings we like to have shows that expose our listeners to some of the musical formats we don't have a chance to explore during the day and Progressive Torch and Twang is one of our longest running. Uh, the show plays a uh, mix of folk, uh, rock, country, uh, altogether it's become known as Americana and it has a very loyal listener base. The show, Progressive Torch and Twang, was actually started as one of the original specialty shows the very first year that the impact started, which I think was 1989. And it was Jenny Sparandeo's kind of project. She was like, why don't we do like an alt country thing, something like, uh, you know, Uncle Tupelo. And she brought up a couple of examples like that, and people were on board. But there was this group of artists, things like, uh, people like Katie Lang and Dwight Yoakam who were doing interesting music but were completely overlooked by, by commercial interests. And she sort of realized, hey, you know, we could do something. She took the name of the show from a Katie Lang album called Absolute Torch and Twang and said, well, let's kind of modify it. We'll make it progressive because we're the impact. And uh, Progressive Torch and Twang held. Through the years, I think it's been a good name because you can't really pin me down on what exactly Torch and Twang is, right? You can't say, well, that doesn't sound very Torch and Twang, so it's sort of a judgment call. So I, I think what we try to do is make it as eclectic as possible and sort of string together just sort of a, a logical progression of things. Pelopamesia, I can't from how I need you. Your flame, but I think my blood is. We were but the dreams of Grecian kings. I think one of the things that's so interesting about this music is how much of it feels real, how much of it feels accessible. I think when people hear the word country, they immediately cover their ears and say, ah, I'm not interested, I don't want to hear it. But they'll listen to our show and they'll say, I don't like country music, but I really like what you're playing. What is this? And just as it is at the station as a whole, the impact is an alternative station. And our show, too, is an alternative to what you hear on Top 40 Country Radio. You're not going to hear things like that on our show. And I think that's different. It's not overly processed. It's not fake. The people who are on our show that we play on our show, they're songwriters. They're singing songs, they're writing songs that mean something to them. They have a history and they have a heart, and I think people really connect with that. Torch and Twang is in a chicken or the egg type situation where there's a great scene for Twang music in the Lansing area, uh, but it's hard to tell if that came about because of the show or the show came about in response to it. Uh, needless to say, they're both highly related to each other. Um, Doug and Karina bring in more guests on their show than most other specialty shows on The Impact. They really have a lot of great community involvement uh, and they're always out uh, at concerts. You'll often see them at Max or the Temple Club when it was open. Uh, at the local shops, Elderly Instruments is kind of a, a center of the whole scene uh, in Lansing. Um, but they're also very involved with the Folk Fest and other events around town. Uh, they've maintained those connections and people know that uh, when they want to either get a show or become known on the scene, they really come in for the torch and twang and get their name out there. We've had a lot of people playing live in the studio and that's one of my favorite parts of doing the show is, is being able to have musicians and basically we get a front row seat. They come into the studio, it's, it's really intimate and we get the privilege of putting them on the air and at the end of, of the, uh, the interviews we're always thanking each other. The musicians are thanking us and, and we're thanking them because it's, it's such a nice opportunity for us. Uh, we've had a lot. We've had Wayne the Train Hancock which was incredible for me and having him in the studio not only did he bring his own band but he also brought members of Steppin' In It down. He brought Andy Wilson and Joe Wilson in and they played with him. 
And he was funny because he's an established artist and he's one of the guys when I first started doing the show that I thought, oh, if I could be lucky enough to have somebody like that, you know, I, I could just retire at, at that point. And uh, when he called me earlier to find out when I wanted him down, I didn't want to push it too much. And uh, he said, well, how many songs do you want us to play? And I said, well, I don't know, three or four? He goes, how about nine? <laughs> and I said, well, <laughs> okay. And he came down and played for an hour you know, plus or, or so. And most of those cuts, I think, are on the YouTube channel. So, so that's been one that, that still uh, you know, sets out in, in my mind. And he's a guy that, sure, promotion's always good, but he had a whole tour booked. He had the night off. He didn't need to come down. And he could have come down and did just done a courtesy two songs, but he came down and delivered a performance and just you know, was appreciative at, at the end. And, and I, was, uh, you know, I was in seventh heaven having a guy like Wayne Hancock in. And he just ran the whole entire <laughs> show. And he basically did the interview. He did a concert live and had all of these musicians in there. And that was a lot of fun. So the show itself has been around for a long time, but relatively recently, probably within the last four or five years, uh, the show has had two hosts, uh, Doug Neal and Karina Van Hamlin. And just having that dynamic has been really great for the show. I think they are both knowledgeable about music in different ways. Uh, and I think they interact well with each other. And when people listen, they really get the feeling that both of them are really connected with the music and both are true fans of the music and it just really comes across over the radio. So four years ago is actually when I came on to start co-hosting Torch and Twang on a regular basis and Doug had been doing the show traditionally it had been a one-person show and then for a while a two-person show and I came back on when Doug had been doing the show solo again for a while so I you know when I came back in it had been missing that second person for a while and the show is a unique animal here at the impact in that I think it's one of the only shows and certainly the only specialty show that has multiple hosts and I think that that brings a, a different dynamic to it you get two different points of view and you get two different people picking the music I think having the the female voice is always nice because uh, you sort of have the the male female combo and I, I think uh, you know, it sort of satisfies all the radio genres or all the radio, uh, you know, I don't know, markets or whatever that the people like. Some people like to have the female voice, some people like to have the both. And uh, it seems to be pretty popular to have male-female uh, duo on the air. I think it's, it's no accident that morning shows all, all do that too. And, but more importantly, she's good on the air. We actually stole her away from a commercial station and she, uh, she can uh, oh, pick out a good playlist too. She, she knows the music as well as I do. It's easy as the solo host of a show to get into a pattern of doing things the same all the time or, or picking music that's familiar or that's interesting to you. And I've done commercial radio and I've had, you know, been able to program myself and, and do, you know, my own individual shows. And so it's nice sometimes to have another ear come in and pick something that, oh, you know, I wouldn't really pick this, but it makes the show more diverse and interesting to have two people running. Uh, two people picking music, two people talking about their favorite albums of the year. And I think it brings a, another element to the show to have two people hosting it. When we're looking to bring in a new host for a different specialty show, I think the greatest compliment we could uh, give Doug and Karina is that we really steer them to the Torch and Twang show and say, hey, this is the model for how a specialty show can be run. Uh, not only do they have great on-air presence, uh, but they're really connected with the community and they really know the music and it really gets across to the listeners. Mm -hmm.